Welcome to Calbekistan, a place where anybody can learn math. I'm Mr. Calbeck, and today we're going to talk about rules of simplifying square roots. You probably are seeing some of this stuff in your books lately, and I just want to give you a quick video on some basic rules on dealing with combining and simplifying square roots. If you're looking for uh, how to simplify a single square root, uh, that'll be in the next video. Uh, link in the description. So let's jump in here. Uh, there's a handful of things I want to do is how do we, how we do operations with square roots. Uh, so we'll start with the easiest one, which is multiplication. When you're multiplying square roots together, uh, you have to treat the square root as it's is kind of its own thing. So I can multiply these, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numbers inside the square root and that's it. So you can multiply square roots together, no big deal. And so this would be equal to the square root of 14. Now, this is different if you had something like this. 2 times the square root of 7 is not equal to the square root of 14. Notice here, 2 is not in a square root, and square root of 7 is. In the same way that I can't combine something like 2 and x, that doesn't become like 14 or something, it becomes 2x. The same process happens here. 2 times the square root of 7, they're different kinds of numbers. This is a square root or radical. This is a whole number or integer. Um, they're different kinds of numbers, so I can't put them together. All I can do is write it like this. You can either write it as a decimal, which is acceptable in some classrooms, or you can simplify it as 2 times root 7. And that's totally acceptable. Um, remember in math, if you don't have a symbol next to something, so 2x or 2 root 7 or whatever it is, that's always a multiplication symbol in there anyways. It's a little invisible sign. You don't have to uh, write it in if you don't want to. It's not wrong if you do though. Okay. So with square roots, you can multiply what's inside of them, no big deal. Okay, the next thing we'll talk about is division. Since I can multiply square roots together, it stands to reason that I can do the opposite of multiplying, which is division. And you can do that here as well. I've got the square root of 15 and the square root of 3. Those simplify really nicely. And all you're going to do is just divide these two together. So the square root of 15 and the square root of 3 is just equal to the square root of 5. And again, you're allowed to multiply or divide the numbers inside the square roots, but you're not allowed to do that if this number is not in the square root. So for example, um, if this is a three, that's as simple as I can make it. I can't turn it into square root of five. Okay, but if it is, then I'm good to go. You could also write this, if you have a number here, you could change this to multiplication. You could change this to one third times the square root of 15 as well. These are the same, okay? But I can't combine integers, regular numbers with square root numbers. They're completely different kinds of numbers. And just like variables, you can't put them together. But if square roots are just like variables, is it possible to add and subtract them? For example, can I add the square root of three and the square root of four? And the answer is no, you cannot. In the same way that you can't add x and y together and get w or something, I can't combine square roots that have different numbers on the inside. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind, if I did have an, um, another x here, x plus x is something that I can combine. And hopefully you all out there know that, that this is 2x. So that means if I had a 3 and another 3, I should be able to combine that as well, and you can. In the same way that I've got a ninja 1 here, it's a secret 1 that's hiding. Remember, ninja 1s are always invisible, stealthy, can't see them. Um, there's 1s in front of every variable that doesn't have another number there. There's 1s here as well. This is 1 square root of 3 and another 1 square root of 3, which makes 2 square root of 3. It's exactly the same addition process that you would do with variables. So you can add square roots together if they have the same number on the inside and you can't otherwise. 
okay? And the same way you can subtract square roots, but they have to have the same number on the inside. These two have to match. If they don't match, you can't subtract them. But if you can, it's exactly the same as combining the numbers of variables. So 5x minus 8x, you could do that, would give you negative 3x. 5 root 2 minus 8 root 2 gives you negative 3 root 2. Okay, same thing there. And that's the basics for combining different kinds of square roots. Hope that's been helpful. Um, again, stay tuned. If you want to learn how to change one square root and simplify it down, I'll show you how to do that in the next video. I'll see you guys next time.